Jody Sue has been all the rage the last two or three weeks. I made a video maybe two weeks ago on Damien Andy Jr. But I stayed a bit away from Jody Sue and then took a few days off. The week off was amazing by the way. I had a lovely time. And it's good to get out of some of these cases that you're stuck in on a daily basis. After a bit of a break and a few days off you feel kind of refreshed in yourself and in your perspective on some of these cases. I recommend anyone who, like me, consumes this content on a daily basis for months, takes a break, resists the urge to watch content for a few days. Short term, it might feel like you're missing out, but definitely long term, it will help you. But I didn't talk too much about Jody when all this kicked off, because I'm not too sure on her, to be honest. And I don't want to drag the channel down a rabbit hole if I'm unsure of the value of that rabbit hole, despite the clicks and views that I might get. There is some alarming stuff on Jody Sue, 100%. Michelle After Dark has done some great videos the past two weeks explaining some of these things. Things like the search dogs and Jody washing her feet and there's a lot, a lot of issues. A lot of inconsistencies in what Jody Sue says and she should definitely be on the list of suspects, without doubt. But for me, she's way down that list and nothing that I've seen in the last two weeks has propelled her way up that list. For me, the wells are still ahead of her, and even her own son is still well ahead of her. I want to talk about the motive for Jodie Sue's involvement, and I want to go through it. And I, I think there's kind of two separate camps here. One in which Jodie Sue's strange behaviour and things that she has said is a result of her protecting someone or some people, and the other is the direct involvement. I'll start with a few scenarios for the direct involvement. So in most cases, young girls like this, they're taken for SA by the perpetrator. I think we all agree that's not the case here. If that was the case, it, it would more than likely, obviously, be a male that would take her. A second one, and an interesting one, is to create havoc on Ben Hill Road as a motive to get people like Jackie Dobbs out, away, don't come back. We know how Jodie Sue feels about neighbours. We know how she felt about Jackie Dobbs and the land dispute that was going on there but it's it's very extreme to say the motive here was to take summer wells to create upheaval on ben hill road make it not the most appealing place it's not the most appealing place either way but it's it's very extreme and i've seen people give examples of or oh, was summer snatched just for a few days to create this commotion and there was no plan to say murder summer but things went wrong it's a wild speculation. I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's very extreme to go grabbing a girl to create some dispute in an area or to draw the FBI or the LE into the area. There's a lot better ways you can do it than that. A third one is revenge. Revenge perhaps on the wells. I don't see this. I don't think it's strong enough. Again, very extreme reaction. And the fourth one is might sound as mad as the other three but i think it's a lot more common than we think and that is involved in selling a child to a child trafficking ring you might hear some more this week especially maybe about some connections that jody sue has and some of the people on ben hill road the connections that they have with big drug crime rings and i may surprise you at the level that that is at or was at i had initially thought for a while that it was just a, a small few bags of weed that was being sold down there, nothing ex extreme, nothing large. But I think I was way off there. It seems like there's some some big stuff, some high level activity going on. And it, it seems incredible also that Ronnie Lawson came out and said that there's no problem in that area. When we all have access to the public records and we can see that that's just not true at all. Far from it. We have heard Don talk in the past about how he's been to places where kids are sold. He's been to places like that. Has Jody Sue been to such places? Has any of the Bernards or anyone else on Beach Creek been to such places or have access to such gangs? Worth noting also the skill set involved in trafficking drugs across the country, i.e. stashing them and transporting them across state lines, is pretty similar to the skill set you need to traffic and transport kids you can see why some of these gangs will will have an overlap will be involved in both activities was summer taken by someone and sold to one of these gangs i know it's awful but it does go on 
don't be naive to it. Tennessee, we know, has a problem with it. Was Jody Sue and others involved in selling Summer? Summer, I would imagine, would be on the high end of prices for kids. Again, I know, apologies, it's awful. But I'm sure she would make a lot of money or make some debt go away. It's wild speculation here, but Summer has just vanished into thin air. And Jody Sue's behaviour is very suspicious. But also, it's worth noting that this scenario of selling a kid to a child trafficking ring or to a gang also applies to the Wells themselves. To Candace, to Don, to Grandma Candace, who I'll talk about during the week. So if this is what happened, if Summer was sold to one of these gangs, who do you think is more likely responsible? The family? Someone in the family? Or some stranger on the street? Or could it be equal? The small stats that I've seen, especially the ones around familiar trafficking, family trafficking, would suggest to me that if Summer was sold to one of these gangs, it more than likely came from an immediate family member rather than a stranger or a neighbour. But you can't rule it out. And I think out of the four scenarios there for direct involvement, that would be the top one. But there is other scenarios. There are scenarios where Jodie Sue isn't directly involved in taking Summer. It wasn't her plan. It wasn't her idea. But she knows who did it. And she's covering their ass. She's not telling us everything she knows. She maybe said a few white lies that were white lies in her mind. Maybe she thought these people were innocent at the time. And the strange behaviour and things she has said are a consequence of her protecting someone. Could be someone close. Could be someone down the road who just has a bit of dirt on her. I watched a couple of hours of the deleted Facebook videos from Jody Sue's Facebook page on Squaltit's channel a week or so ago. I don't see what a lot of other people seem to see in that, to be honest. A lot of people, I know Scott H was talking a lot about it, were hung up on Jody Sue saying, we heard Summer scream, we heard her scream. They were like, how does she know it was Summer? Because it was just a scream. Like for me, if a girl goes missing and you did in fact hear a scream, it's not too much of a reach to start saying we heard Summer or we heard her scream. It's reasonable to assume that if that's the truth, that's who also screamed. It was Summer. So I don't see it as a, a big slip or anything like that. But there are other parts of that Facebook Live that really got my attention. It's also good to understand or keep in mind how Jody Sue uses the Facebook Live feature. It's sort of like a diary or therapeutic to her in some way. I have never used this feature on Facebook or Instagram on my personal account. I think it's a bit weird. I would get caught up and get into way too many conversations with family and friends. But I can see why people would use it if they were trying to show off a, a nice location or somewhere where they are. It's just a bit odd. I don't use it. I've never seen any of my own family or friends use it. But I, I don't know. Maybe this is very common in Tennessee in general. For people just to be going live on Facebook, Instagram all the time. I don't know. Not in my world anyway. Jody Sue did. She used to do it for hours on end. Even long before Summer went missing, this is what Jody Sue used to do. She would go live on Facebook and just kind of rant. And she continued doing the same after Summer went missing. Very little interaction with the chat. Just words and thoughts flying out of her brain. And I wonder, are some of these lives an effort to communicate with maybe just one person? To get a message to him or her, for example. Somebody who isn't answering calls, who isn't answering your texts. You're like, I'll just go live and hopefully they'll see something is up and contact me. I talked before in the Delphi case how young people do this on Snapchat and Instagram stories. They put up a public story, but in reality, it's just for one person. They're trying to get their attention. So Jody Sue uses that feature a lot. Lots of ramblings, lots of word vomit. And little or no interaction with the chat. Which is which is the strangest part to me, I won't lie. Some of these things that she has said before and after someone went missing on the lives, I think, are just fantasy. Made up. Completely exaggerated in some cases. But I just don't read too much into her words anymore from these lives. As there, there's just so much rubbish in there. And there's also likely a very, very good reason why Ellie said that they don't believe the scream. Like you have three people telling you. That they heard a scream and they're saying we don't believe you. They have good reason not to believe Jody Sue and her two kids about that scream. They know her better, a lot better than we do. They let us know very little. We know very little about the ins and outs of the Summerwells case from the FBI, 
from LA. But what they did tell us is they don't believe Jordy Sue. We know that. But one of the most clear and seemingly genuine lives that I seen from Jordy Sue was one of the lives that came the day after Summer went missing. She was sitting in the car. I think the kids were there. And she was saying all the right things. Her speech is very good. The best that I have heard. She doesn't seem like she's under the influence of anything. She's focused. She wants people to share the poster. Share the face. She seems genuinely worried and concerned. It just seemed very genuine to me. But then there's a few days off. And the next one comes about a week or so later. And there's a big difference. That's when we start to see the Jodie Sue that we now know. And it seems like there's an escalation process going on. And, and, and keeps going for a few weeks, a few months, to basically where we are today. She starts to ramble a bit more. She starts to try and throw Jackie Dobbs under the bus in a sly way. But she knows what she's doing. She talks about Damien, Andy Jr. wanting to sleep in her bed because he's so scared. This 19-year-old boy, terrified. She doesn't say he's 19. She t- this is where she starts to separate him. She starts to talk about him like he's a baby. He's a 19-year-old man. But we see from very early on, Jody Sue making him into a little child. He's not a little boy. He's not a child. He is, that we know of right now, the closest known male adult to Summer that day when she got gone. Why is Jody Sue making him into a, a soft little boy? And I do believe Fred Hill. I know he's a liar as well. But I believe him when he says he's capable of anything. He knows. He's related to them. He knows. Why did Jody Sue's behaviour and demeanour change over the course of that week? She is a mother. She has maternal instincts. Was there something nagging at her about the behaviour of her boy? Did she just put it down to what happened to Summer? Sort of like how Ali and Ali's mother blame Summer's disappearance on H's bad behaviour. So. Mothers love to make excuses. They do. Was he really with Jody Sue when she heard that scream? Or was he outside? Was this whole scream an effort to get everybody in the house together? To alibi everybody? Jody Sue, like, like most mothers, will of course believe that their baby boy is incapable of such things. Her son would never have any, anything to do with that. So by saying this little lie, you're not really hurting the case. You're, you, in your mind, you're helping the case because you're helping FBI and LE stay away from an area that's going to go nowhere you keep them focused on on finding the little girl and she definitely doesn't want her baby boy her little boy to be dragged into tbi offices or questioned or anything like that it would be a waste of time because of course he has nothing to do with it so what's wrong with a little white lie just say all three of us were in the house we heard that scream and i can see how in her head at the time that that's all that is just a little white lie to protect her boy and keep the investigation focused but did Jodie Sue see anything in that first week that made her question things was Damien Andy Jr like H did he seem a little off after it was Jodie Sue worried about his peep and tom activity why did she ask Chris McDonough that question who was she talking about it's highly unlikely it was Don I think we all know who she was talking about what made her shift in that week why is she suddenly acting like he's a little innocent boy? In the weeks that go by, why does she suddenly start covering for him when he's peeping in the woods? When he's creeping in the woods, whether he's doing it for her or whether she just came across him running down the hill, I don't know. But I do believe he was there in the woods in the weeks after. He is currently the closest known male to Summer that day. He is not a little boy. He should have been under scrutiny from the very start in this case. Maybe he was. Maybe TBI gave him a good shaking and and ruled him out, but they're telling us nobody is ruled out, and he's the closest male. I'd be very interested to know, and Candace is frustrating, because Candace knows a lot of this. People just don't ask her. Did Damien Andy Jr. follow her on TikTok? Was he on TikTok? Did he see photos and videos that were put up that day? Given that he was just 19, and how he's such a little boy, I think there's a good chance he was on TikTok. I think there was a good chance that he would see all Candace's TikToks because remember, TikToks based off location. So it's going to show you your neighbours. At the very least, it will show you them once or twice until you decide not to follow or you don't interact. But it will show you your closest neighbours, especially out in an area like that. Did Damien, Andy Jr., did he see all the ones Candace put up of, of summer? There was lots of ones swimming. On that day and long before it, 
Fred also told us that he's seen Damien and the junior in a swimming pool with Summer. The swimming pool that just disappeared from Summer's house. I'm not sure do I believe that. Again, I'd love Candice to just confirm that. Was he at your house? Was he swimming in the pool with Summer? He is the closest known male to Summer that day. He must be high on that list. And I've seen nothing in the last few weeks to drag him back down. It, only the opposite. Especially the way Jody Sue was going on. If you're going to tell us, don't look here, nothing to see. We're going to look. And we're going to look harder because of that. So that's the kind of five scenarios in which I see... If Jodie Sue is involved, that's how she's involved. I think you all know which kind of one I I, I lean more towards. But very interested in the comments here. Is there a scenario that I'm missing out on? Is there something glaring obvious that I missed? What's your thoughts? Do you think Jodie Sue is involved at all? If she is, how? In what way? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please also, if you've come this far in the video, you're, you're probably an OG. So will you please go over to my second um, channel, Novelist True Crime Extra. I've been plotting away behind the scenes on that. And I have some good stuff coming in the next couple of weeks. Things that I think you will find interesting, but are also a bit different. So please give it a subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Good luck. God bless. Have a good day.